The movie starts by showing a German business, Hotbot Corporation. They are testing a new kind of robot that looks and feels like a real person for people in America, but they still need to get an official US patent for their technology, and they hope to convince Congress to give it to them. A reporter who was interested in their robots interviews Dr. Heinrich Schaffer, the person who invented the hot bot. He brings one of his robots to show how it works. But the robot starts to act in a way that is not suitable for the reporter, who is a bit unsure about it. Because the robot's behavior is not suitable for TV, the interview is not broadcasted. But Dr. Schaefer sends the video of the interview to U.S. Senator Biter. The senator likes what he sees and agrees to support Hotbot in Congress if he can have one of the robots. He wants a beautiful blonde robot named Bardo. A few days later, Bardo is sent to Salt Lake City in a box that doesn't draw attention. Two Secret Service agents, Fraser and Kuntz, are there to pick her up. Meanwhile, in a local diner's kitchen, a shy and thin teenager named Lemus Huffington and his lively best friend Leonard Stupensky are working. Their normal workday gets worse when Rodney, the school bully, and his girlfriend, Cassidy, come to the drive through in her sports car. Rodney recognizes Limus's voice and starts to order in a very rude way. Leonard doesn't let Rodney be rude to them and puts something gross in their food, a deep-fried phlegm bay. Rodney and the two workers start to fight after Cassidy says hi to Limus, who is also her friend. As the agents are delivering the box, they start to hear weird noises coming from inside. They decide to open the box because they are worried, but Bardot is able to beat them up and run away. After informing the senator of the incident, the agents set off to locate the hotbot. Meanwhile, on their way home, Limus and Leonard accidentally hit something. Limus, in a state of terror, steps out to investigate and discovers a partially dressed woman, causing him great distress. Wanting to avoid trouble with the authorities, the friends agree to hide the body in Limes' room temporarily as they figure out their next steps. Before returning home, Leonard suggests that Limus should take advantage of the situation with the woman's body, leaving his friend feeling embarrassed and conflicted. The following day, as the agents continue their search for the hotbot, Limus's traditional family goes to church. Alone at home, Limus wakes up to find the woman's body missing, prompting him to call Leonard in a panic. Leonard rushes over with a chainsaw, thinking the woman has turned into a zombie. Upon hearing noises from the bathroom, they prepare to defend themselves, only to find Bardo emerging unharmed after a shower. She calmly invites them to be intimate with her, leaving the men taken aback. Bardo leads them to the bedroom, where she unveils herself, sparking excitement among the men. Leonard eventually leaves them alone and Bardo flirts with Limus until she seemingly shuts down. Confused, Limus calls for Leonard and they realize that Bardo is actually a robot. Meanwhile, the agents meet with Senator Bider, updating him on their progress. They mention their collaboration with Hotbot Corporation to track anyone attempting to use the pleasure doll. The friends take Bardo to Benny, an adult shop owner, to reactivate her. After connecting her to Wi-Fi, which alerts the agents to her location, they find a manual explaining her capabilities and potential for developing human-like traits, much to Leonard's displeasure. To revive Bardo completely, Benny requests Limus's credit card. Bardo comes back to life, and they shop for clothes before bringing her back home. Along the way, Bardo showcases her navigation skills, suggesting hotels where they can be intimate. That night, Limus tries to return to the playhouse to be with Bardo, but his father catches him, sending him back to bed. The next day, he visits Bardo and asks her to wait for him while he goes to school. Meanwhile, his younger sister, Shakobi, finds Bardo in her playhouse and excitedly shares her beliefs with the robot, mistakenly thinking it's a real person. When Limus and Leonard return from school, they are surprised to see Shakobi with Bardo. To their dismay, Shakobi has influenced Bardo to adopt her conservative views, particularly emphasizing the importance of waiting until marriage for intimacy. In a parallel plot, agents arrive at Benny's store to retrieve a pleasure doll, but Benny refuses to cooperate. A physical altercation ensues, leading Benny to spill information that Limus has the sought-after robot. As the men rush to evade the pursuing FBI agents, they narrowly escape a collision and engage in a risky chase. Using quick thinking, Leonard drives towards a railway area, narrowly avoiding a train to shake off the agents. Realizing their cover is blown, Limus and Leonard check Bardo into a motel for safety. In the backdrop, Senator Biter prepares for a rally when the agents inform him about Bardo's location. Although unsure of her whereabouts, they know who is harboring her, 
prompting the senator to demand they lead him to that individual. Shortly after, Limus awakens in the middle of the night to find the senator perched on the edge of his bed. The senator, in a calming manner, empathizes with Limus, recognizing his awkwardness with women. He then confesses his own lack of experience with real women and advises Lemus to bring Bardot back the next morning, promising to resolve the situation afterwards. Lemus and Leonard hurriedly return to the motel, where they learn that Bardot is unaware of her true identity as a robot. Overhearing their discussion, Bardot begins to question her own existence. As they deliberate, agents arrive at the motel, prompting the men to hide in Bardot's room to evade capture. Lemus expresses his willingness to sacrifice himself for Bardot, while Leonard perceives the situation as a hostage scenario and bargains for pizza from the agents. A futile attempt to escape leads to Benny being overpowered by Fraser. With limited options, Limus and Leonard plan to escape through the bathroom, but are apprehended by the agents. Meanwhile, Bardot confronts Fraser, showcasing her formidable combat skills as she defeats the agents. Realizing the danger she poses to the teens, Bardot bids them farewell before departing. Bardot encounters Rodney, who takes her with him, while Limus and Leonard manage to escape from the trunk of a car. Back at work, they ponder Bardot's departure, feeling disheartened. Rodney flaunts his control over Bardot during a party, leading to a confrontation where Bardot stands up against Rodney's mistreatment. She defends Limus and Leonard, overpowering Rodney, before departing with her friends. During their escape, Bardot notices Kuntz and Fraser tailing them. Limus's father discovers the exorbitant credit card charges, leading to a blame game between the parents until the father acts to freeze the account. Bardot, dependent on an active credit card, shuts down while driving, causing an accident where the teens escape unharmed. Returning home, their parents confront them about the credit card bill, speculating on their relationship. They part ways, resigned to the repercussions awaiting them at home. In the aftermath of a car accident, Senator Biter finds himself in the company of Bardot, a robot. He watches as a white fluid seeps from her face, a clear sign of the damage she sustained. Meanwhile, Lemus, who has grown fond of Bardot, is heartbroken. He confides in his best friend, Leonard, expressing his deep affection for Bardot and even referring to her as his first love. Leonard, however, reminds him that his first love is actually Cassidy. A few days later, Cassidy joins a grieving Limus in the cafeteria. He shares his unusual love story with her. She admits missing their shared passion for Star Trek, effectively rekindling their friendship. One evening, Limus's father, an airport luggage inspector, notices his son's melancholy. He reassures Limus that he can handle any problem, having seen all sorts of peculiarities in people's luggage. He encourages Limus to share his burdens, and Limus appreciates his father's support. Later, while taking out the trash, Limus discovers an invitation to Senator Biter's upcoming rally. They decide to infiltrate the rally, donning tuxedos and fake beards for disguise. As the senator delivers his speech, they sneak backstage in search of Bardot. They find Bardot in the dressing room, but she's unresponsive. Leonard suggests they take her, fearing her memory might have been erased. Upon hearing this, Bardot's eyes flicker open, and she recognizes Lemus. However, their reunion is cut short by the arrival of the agents, who throw them out. Fortunately, Benny comes to their rescue, using his nunchucks to incapacitate the agents and escape with Bardot. A chase ensues, with the group navigating the labyrinthine venue. The senator, oblivious to the chaos, attempts to introduce Bardot to his audience as the future. But Bardot never makes it to the stage. Instead, she releases a liquid that makes the floor too slippery for the pursuing agents, allowing the group to escape. In the getaway car, Lemus instructs Benny to drive to the airport. He decides to use his father's frequent flyer miles to send Bardo far away, ensuring her safety. At the airport, Lemus's father welcomes them and assists Lemus and Bardo to their gate, having been informed of the situation by his son. At the gate, Lemus and Bardo share a heartfelt goodbye. Lemus confesses his love for her, and Bardo shedding a tear reciprocates. She kisses him and advises him to cherish his first experiences. With that, she boards the plane, leaving Limus behind but safe. 
The scene then shifts to days later. Limus is back at his drive through booth when Cassidy shows up, inviting him on a date. Remembering Bardot's advice, Limus seizes the opportunity for his first date and eagerly joins Cassidy. The movie comes to a close as we see the newly founded couple drive away to embark on their collective journey.